Family businesses make up a quarter of the British economy and employ nearly 10 million people. But a thousand small firms are going bust every single month. Sorry. This business is on a knife edge. At some point, we're going to have to call it a day. For God's sake, do something. For family firms, it's not just profits, but relationships on the line. £50,000 now, and you've never seen me go. I don't know if it's ever going to get that. You must see some hope. Otherwise, let's not bother with this. No. I'm Alex Polizzi. I grew up in a family business that expanded from one small cafe to become an empire worth billions. Now, I'm trying to bring six family firms back from the brink. This is a business. You're ruining your health, you're ruining your family life. He's just used to getting his own way, and I'm used to getting mine. This week, some Mancunian mechanics in need of an overhaul. Darling, you're working a third of the hours available to work. Which is shocking. As financial trouble... This is the first month that I've not been able to pay the rent on this place. In three months' time, we're not going to be here. And family secrets. You told me something five minutes ago that you've never told me. We need to know this. Threatened to run this business off the road. Oh, I'm stupid. Listen, I'm not trying to make you look stupid. Way to the outskirts of Manchester to a struggling family run MOT garage. Like most of us, I'm pretty clueless about the internal workings of a combustion engine, but I have been very unhappy about every service I've ever received from a garage. So, as a consumer, this is going to interest me a lot. Small independent firms in this industry have taken a real bashing over the last 10 years, with car dealerships and large chains taking a bigger slice of the action. Nearly a third of all small traders have ended up on the scrap heap. The money coming through is, is dropping quite dramatically. And I keep thinking, will we get through? Will we make it? Have we got enough money in the bank? How long can we carry on? And that scares me. In 2003, Jan and Derek Lord set up their business in Guidebridge. What's the registration number? But in the last two years, profits have tumbled. When she shows me computer printout, what, what we took last year and the year before and the year before, it is worrying. If I don't get this right, then there's not just one or two out of work, it's six and it's a whole family. In a bid to combat the financial problems, Jan and Derek sold their home to provide some cash flow for the company. They've got all their eggs in one basket. If this business goes down, it's going to affect them hard. It's not just their future, but also that of their three children. Gareth, Nicola and younger son Adam all work at the garage, but none of them have any idea just how bad things are. The main business side of it's normally my mum that deal with them, rather than me. My job description is an MOT tester, so I do the MOTs. And if there's no MOTs, then... I don't do a lot. The more I go into family businesses, the more evident it appears that not all members of a family carry the same or equal load. I come in, I do my work, I go home, I get my wages on a Friday. It seems no, Mum Jan is trying to keep the problems with the place to herself. I don't know what to do anymore. How do I make people redundant? How, how can I do that? I can't do it to any of them let alone my own boys. There's an awful lot of pressure on me because if, if it doesn't go right, I'm going to be forced to make a decision that I just don't want to make. Sorry. So this is Guidebridge. And I can see an A-board, Guidebridge MOT, MOT service, tyres, exhausts. If that's the only advertising they're doing, I'm not surprised they're not getting much passing trade. So, I've got just ten weeks with the Lords to try and turn this struggling firm around. Stand there, I'll get the other one off as well. 
Don't want you hurting your back. <laughs> Very nice to meet Welcome you. Welcome to Guidebridge. Well, pleased Very to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Are you ready for this? I think so. I'm ready for a new challenge. Yeah! <laughs> so, the yes. first thing I want to know is who does what round here? Right. Who's the boss? Are you the boss? On paper, <laughs> yes. Yeah? Um, but Jan runs the garage. I tend to do a lot of the high-level stuff now, so... Like what? Like, um, VAT returns, accounting figures, banking, insurance, getting quotes for things. Marketing? So um, we're not good at marketing, but um, that's something that, yes, you know, that is something that we need to look at. OK. Can I meet the others? Certainly. <laughs> this is Adam. <laughs> He's what we call the gobby one. I mean, just look at him. How can you not love him? <laughs> I'm going to find it hard to resist, but I'll, I'll do my best, OK? The baby of the family and clearly doted on is Adam. He's in charge of the MOT tests. How many can you do in a day? On a busy day, about ten-ish. How often does that happen? Not very often. Have so... you ever worked anywhere else? You've worked, always worked here. I did me prom. And then, 8 o'clock in the morning, I was here. Do you think you get away with murder? No. No? You think they're tough on you? Yeah. Do you? I'm the, I'm the hard one. I'm the hard done to one. Are you? Gosh, you bear it so bravely. <laughs> I don't apologize. <laughs> Adam's older and far less cheeky brother is Gareth. Jan persuaded him to join the business five years ago when times were better. It's easy work. It's not like coming to work here. Um, <laughs> That, you know. that makes me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not like coming to bells. work. Yeah. It's, you know, you come in and your day's pretty much balanced out all day. You know, you're just left to get on with it. Because actually, you're on a wage, so it's not your problem too much if the work doesn't keep raining. No, in. we still get paid at the end of the week. Sister Nicola is the third sibling on the books. She runs reception and helps Jan schedule the work. What do you think that the garage is really good at? People do see us as a, a friendly, honest garage. Why do you not get more repeat custom, then? Mm. Mm. I've now met the main players, and it's amazing how quickly I can build up a picture of what's going wrong here. The engine of this business is obviously Jan, which is fine. I don't expect everyone to be up and running about town like lunatics, desperately trying to punt for new business. Someone actually has to stay here and do the work. But they do at least have to be involved and interested in how new work is going to be found. No one feels the time pressure very much. Maybe that's because they're not as busy as they should be. And when I asked Jan to look at exactly how many hours the mechanics are working, we both get a shock. You know, when you take how many hours we've got available to work... And how few... And how many hours we actually charged out. Darling, you're working a third of the hours available to work. Yes. The, the garage and all the people and the mechanics in it are only working a third of the hours available. Yes. Which is shocking. Yes. Of course you're struggling. But even if we did, uh, I mean... 60%. That's still going to double to what we're doing now. Deary me. Basically, you just have to get more business through that door. Yeah. yeah. So, one problem is clear. They badly need more customers or there could be no business for Jan's kids to inherit. Small garages such as this rely heavily on loyal and local customers. But if customer service isn't up to scratch, people simply won't come back. Right, you can all come in now, thank you. I've arranged for a cavalcade of new clients to descend on the garage. It's going to test their service skills to the limit, not just under the bonnet, but over the counter too. Right, does someone tell them where to go and what to do? That's part of the job. You're, you're <laughs> supposed to be welcoming, make sure people know what to do. You need a bigger car park. Go to take your keys into reception for me, please. Well, I just don't understand if there's a system. I'm not kind of entirely sure what it is. 
I'm just wondering, does everyone know how long, you know, more or less what time they'll be finished? I've told this lady it's going to be about an hour. And then you're next, are you? June's will be first off. June's will be first off, then this lady. Let's make sure yeah. that everyone's told. That's been MOT'd now. Somehow it's not quite the charming experience I want it to be. Who tells who what to do? Well, I'll come over and say what, which one do you want me to do? And then I'll just go through and see who needs the car back first. OK, well, I just want to see oh, high, high efficiency, extremely <laughs> efficient. OK. It's Nicholas. I don't know, I hope she's not always like this, because it certainly would put me off coming somewhere. You know, it's Tuesday morning, I've got my car in, I want someone to be nice to me. Is it that much to ask? Unfortunately, it seems Nicola has overheard my early observations. What's happened? She's, she's just a bit upset. Go what? On, Alex. I'm what? Not stupid. Listen, I'm not trying to make you look stupid, sweetie. I mean, that's just not in my interest. I thought she coped extremely well with all these people coming in and out, but it makes you wonder, could we have done something differently yeah. or how do we do it? And that's what you're looking that's for. That's what I'm looking for. So It's not like I've ever run a garage. I want someone to tell me what and how it should happen. You need to speak to Alex and tell her how it runs in there. Darling, get yourself together and then we'll talk, OK? One thing is obvious. Nicola's role on reception is key, and I need her firing on all cylinders if we're going to get through the morning. When everyone came in, it's kind of frustrating because you expect it to be a hive of activity. Now, everyone was actually already working on a job. Yeah, yes. so I can't give them... No, no. These... And I, but I think it's quite important that that's communicated to the customer. It's not like we're just sitting here and actually ignoring your car. It's just that everyone's got a job on. The moment, you know, this is the order that you'll be looked after in, and as soon yeah. as one job's finished, then the next car will go on straight away. We'll get it done. Worked well under pressure. It's been a bumpy ride, but with their receptionist recovered, the mechanics are soon back on track. Another one done. Bring the next one. We do get this many jobs on from time to time. We get on with it, deal with it, just do it. You know, it's, it's only busy for so long. So, just crack on. So what did you think of the whole experience? They didn't give me any idea of how long it would take, so I've been waiting around for three hours. Yeah. I thought, I guessed and thought it might take an hour and a half, but it's taken double that. But if I'm, I'm going to wait three hours, I'd prefer to be doing something or watching something or reading something in that meantime. And the waiting room's a little bit boring. There's your invoice for your short service. We've changed your... What do you think could be done to improve it? Um, nicer waiting area. And perhaps when you got here to say exactly what they were doing and how long it would take. That's a very good point. It's been an eye-opening morning, and the extent of the problems here are far worse than I first feared. They'll never generate loyalty from their customers when the way they look after them is this poor. On top of that, the lack of work is leaving mechanics standing around idle, driving overheads through the roof. Jan is trying, but I think the rest of the family need a boot up the business backside. It's time to lay down the law with the Lords. I gave you a challenge today. I think that what was missing and what really struck me was that amongst yourselves, you're a really charming, engaging family. But that doesn't really translate very well to the customer. You've got people in your yard. You go up and say, hi, you know, can I help? You know, do you know where to go? This is the way, you know, have you had an all right morning? You start engaging with them straight away. And I felt that, like that was missing. And you, I thought, were going to be the exponent of customer service. You've got four or five people in that waiting room. And you didn't say hello to any of them. It was like they didn't exist. You got one chance to make a good impression and you blow it and they're gone. You can layer it, you can nuance it, but that first impression is what counts. Second thing is, waiting room. You need to make it so it's somewhere where you could while away an hour without wanting to slit your wrists in boredom. And I know you're doing, and you believe you're doing, a good job. But actually, you do not come over as special in any way. 
from any other garage that I've been to. I know that's a hurtful thing to say because you've worked very hard, mm -hmm. but this is in your hands to fix. You do have some incredible selling points. And I think something that should be your unique selling point is your status as a family. But we need to work on your customer skills and I'm gonna find a way to do that. We think as a group that we portray a good customer service, but somebody coming in from the outside um, telling us that perhaps we're not that special. Um, yeah, it, it hurts, but it can only be good for us. Having hit the family with some home truths, the first issue I want to address is their lacklustre customer service. Just six miles down the road is Manchester City Football Club. Their clientele includes some of the world's wealthiest, so when it comes to customer care, it's got to be pitch perfect every time. Wow. Although this seems like a slightly sideways step for them, I mean, this is a football club and they run a garage, what I'm really hoping they understand is that the basics of customer service are the same in whatever business you're in. And today, head of Man City's hospitality team, Ali Benson-Smith, is ready to prove precisely that with a customer service masterclass. So what we're actually going to start by doing is we're going to practice with... Uh, Alex is going to be a guest, and I'm also going to be a guest, and you're going to welcome us into the Mancunian restaurant, which is just behind us here. Well, I've never been here before. Oh, have you not? Well, you are in for a treat, let me tell you that. Thanks. Can I just let you know that the washrooms are at either end of the suite? Thank you. First up, it's the boys' turn to show what they can do. Can I just seat you here? Certainly, thank you very much. Thank you. One um, of our waiters will go on with his short lift to take your order for your drinks and your food. The bar, this side, the washroom's through there. Now, how do I know where my uh, seat is in the stadium? I never know. <laughs> it's very interesting how the men have all focused on the bar. That's obviously the bar is there, madam. As if you could so it. it's yeah. a B minus for the boys, but can Nicola and Jan, who deal the most with customers, up their game? We'll be able shortly to take your order for any drinks. You'll be able to go and, and see the match from outside, and a wine waiter will be with you very, very shortly. Thank you very much okay. indeed. Enjoy Thank your day. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Some nice bits from everybody. Enjoy your day, which is very nice from you, Jan. Thank you for that. And again, I think the nurturing qualities in the ladies are coming to the fore. And I think well, they did pretty well, I think. Certainly better than expected. But I am quite nervous as to how they will deal with this place when it's heaving, full of people. I think they're going to struggle a bit. It's time to put what they've practised to the test as they join the staff on match day. It's a big risk for me, taking five people brand new into my team. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice to see you all this morning. People pay a lot of money to come here and have this experience, so we've got to make sure it happens for them. <laughs> I hope you all have an absolutely fabulous day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good one. Thank you. Hey, it feels odd wearing a tie, because I don't normally wear one. A massive difference to the garage, obviously. That's a little bit, a little bit daunting. Hello, welcome to the Mancunian Suite. If you'd like to come this way. You know, it's got us talking to people more, which is, I'm sure, what it's all about. Okay, Hello. Come on. Yeah. What name are you books under? You know, the way we talk to people and just making it that little bit better for them. Box three, yes, no problem. This way, follow me, please. I was quite nervous first thing, but we have settled into it now. It's all right. Well, is everything all right for you? Brilliant, thank you. I can see why for Alex to bring us to somewhere that's corporate, because it does show you how businesses should be run and how the attention to detail should be there. I was facing the morning with a degree of trepidation. I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm saying, how on earth are they going to bring themselves out of themselves and, you know, be able to portray the customer service that we want to give to our guests? So I was absolutely thrilled that they, that they did as well as they did. There you go. 
there, Nathan. Score? 4 1. 4 1. I've had a good day out at a place that I love and learnt something from it. You know, what can be better than that? Today's been brilliant. Um, I think it's gone really, really well, and I think all of us have been able to take something away from it that we can go back and put into the garage. The visit to Man City has been a real eye-opener for the family, and it's great that Jan can now see what good customer service is all about. But before she can put what they've learned into practice, I need the whole family to start taking their financial woes more seriously. I've actually got nothing to do now. Who on? Me. Yeah, I think the younger generation in this business are used to allowing all the responsibility to rest on Jan and Derek's shoulders, and that is something that I've swiftly got to change. Jan and Derek are not enough to drive this business forward, and each of the kids are perfectly capable of taking on more responsibility than they are at the moment. More than anything else, everyone has to be aware about how parlous the, their finances are, and the fact that everyone's weight has to be brought to bear on solving the problems. But if the siblings are to take on more of the burden, Jan will need to come clean about just how bad their cash flow problem is. You're covering up a kind of great big hole in the foundations, which is that you only pay yourself £500 a month. I oh, know, it's terrible. <laughs> it's pathetic. I oh, know. I mean, I understand that you do it for cash flow reasons. Mm. I mean, you don't actually have to take the money out, but I think on the books you should be paying yourself properly. I really always believe that, because until you do, you cannot see whether a business is truly succeeding or failing. Because right. what you're doing is masking a problem. How long do you think you can go on? It doesn't bear thinking about. I'd probably stumble across now for the next few months, but I, I don't want that decline to start happening and for us not to do anything about it. We need to redress it, all of us, to sat down together, and that's something that I haven't done. I haven't sat them all in a room and said, this is what we're taking, this is what we're doing, this is how much we've got in the bank, and this is what we need to do. I haven't done that. Everyone needs to do a bit more than they've been doing. Yeah. Um, and let's start that today. OK. Yeah? Yeah. Come on, then. This last few months have been quite hard, haven't they? One thing that has come out of, of all of it is I'm thinking that we don't talk to each other as a business as often as what we should do. Um, the figures that Alex has done with me, we're actually working at between 30 and 40% capacity. So that's why we've got money problems, because yesterday or today we've only had six hours work. I've got three mechanics. It doesn't take a mathematician to work out that we've only got three, six hours work and what could be a potential of 21 hours. Um, this is the first month that I've not been able to pay the rent on this place in all the time that we've been trading. We've got to get more people through the door because otherwise in three months' time, we're not going to be here. You're all very quiet. I was going to say it's late paying it. We've got to pay it, but it's the first time that we've been late. Not, yeah, we're not, not paying not, it. Not, yeah. All right, I said the wrong thing. No, I'm not saying you said the wrong thing. But we're late paying it. We haven't not paid it, and we're not 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 going to pay it. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm just but saying it's. But it did come over a bit that way. But... Well, I'm sorry then. I got it wrong. What can I say? What can I say? I just think I was really hard for me to stand there and say all that, oh, but yeah. I've said the wrong thing, so. If we don't do anything, three months down the line, we could be in yeah. trouble. You keeping it to yourself all the time mm. isn't helping, is it? We should share the responsibility. You've kept everything so close to you for so long. You know, you told me something five minutes ago that you've never told me, that it's something that I believe I should have known. Like you say, if you want to pass this down to me, Adam and Nikki, we need to know this. You know, we've been sat there blissfully unaware. 
I knew the cash turnover wasn't brilliant, but I'd have no idea how bad it were. You know, my mum just, she keeps everything on her own shoulders, so only she worries about it, doesn't bother us a lot with it, which is a bit wrong, really. You know, she should keep us in the loop on it, see what's going on. This is a watershed moment. Everyone now understands the perilous state Guidebridge is in. The air has been cleared, and hopefully now the family can all pull together to get this business back on its feet. Obviously, key to rescuing any business is increasing the amount of money that it makes. To address this, I need the family to look at every opportunity possible. Dan's been talking to me a lot about the two revenue streams that they have here, which are the fleet and the retail side to sales. The fleet is the customers that have lots of cars in their pool, all of which come to be serviced and looked after here. Retail is the customer that has a single car. Now, currently, they have about 35% of their business that is fleet services.